So, here we are, we're back for part two, and we're in Firelink Shrine, and we're just going to be, you know, we'll, we'll finish dumping all our, like, points into uh, strength, and now we are going back to the rope bridge to continue on. Hang ourselves. Continue on with the rest <laughs> of the DLC. I mean, you can hang yourself if you want, but, I mean, don't blame it on us if you do. We're merely saying that you can do it, not that you should do it. Yeah. Anyway, so we're at the rope bridge bonfire. Are you and, trying to pull the, like... Miss, can I go to the bathroom? I don't know. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> so you can go down the, the ladder, but you can just kind of drop down. We've here. had enough ladders for Aye, today. Fuck Thank the you ladders. very much. Just fucking drop down. So there's a crystal lizard here. Make sure you kill it. But ultimately, it doesn't matter if you kill it or not because it only gives you large titanite shards. Is that one marked in the guidebook? Because maybe it's just a misplaced marker. No, no, no. It, it's, it's marked. And it's, uh. it's not the guide. It's, um... Oh, the map, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, right. This actually gave me an issue. Um, hilariously. Just beware of this, like these two guys. The angle that he came at me, it was really, it's quite annoying. So was it because you just charged in blindly? Well, it's not so much that. It's like his, like you could wait for him to walk all the way ahead. It doesn't fucking matter. It's like it's two guys, but I'm just saying, just watch out. Uh, so you slide down here and then you double back around to the right, and there is a soul. That's packet. an animation I haven't seen since Dark Souls One, in uh, the depths. Is it not in? Is it not in anybody else in Dark Souls? I don't think you slide down anything in Dark Souls. I can't too. think of anything either. Nor in Bloodborne. Uh, it definitely wasn't the same animation if it was in Bloodborne. So you come down this way, and there's just loads of dead birds. Yeah. So these are Corvians. Um, the ones that spew poison will drop. Uh, basically, just drop dung pies or stock dung pies. The lot of them. So it, it really doesn't doesn't matter. Fuck it. Just if you want to collect shit. Yeah. Like that stuff. So there's like a there's a kind of optimal way of doing this next bit because you can you need to keep dropping down and running back up again. So and these are the other Corvians. Yeah. So the elites. <sighs> these guys are actually beyond fucking irritating as fuck to to beat. These ones are slightly easier. There's ones that have rapiers that are such a pain in the ass. Um, the ones with the claws aren't so bad, but they only drop large titanite shards. They don't actually drop anything good. Maybe this area is like meant to be uh, a metaphor for a really extreme class system because they're all Corvians. What the fuck are you talking about? This area. So, so there's all the dead Corvians, and all then there's the elite Corvians who've got armor and claws and rapiers and shit like that. Oh, so this guy is friendly, and if you come here after beating Freed, he'll be outside, and you can get get a Titanite slab off him. We'll show you it when it comes to it. So the the bonfire's in there, but don't rest at it. And you'll see why, essentially. Because you bring back the Corvian guy for a start. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to be dropping down and you can't be arsed to him fucking attacking you again. So Yeah, just do this well. Basically. You see, so I should have dropped off and drop attacked this thing. I kind of misplaced it. But you can see how that would be easy enough to do. <laughs> so you pick up this simple gem. Again, you don't need to do this if you don't give a shit about a simple gem. But there you go, there is a simple gem. Those um, uh, drop purging stones. Those what things. are they called? Fu fucking abysmal, hot, horrific, fucking spider woman things. <laughs> like they are the design for those things are fucking horrible. <laughs> but anyway, so as you can see, from not resting at the bonfire, that big clawed corvian isn't going to be a pain in your ass. But you need to drop down yet again. So yeah, we're gonna uh, still not rest at the bonfire. Spin the board. Yeah. <laughs> it's wanging on. <laughs> so. The rest of the area is un is fairly complicated to get about, to be honest. But um, we sh I should do a fairly like a fairly competent route that should be easy enough to understand. So run up here. This guy can attempt to push you off the edge uh, like a cheeky bastard that he is. But um, jokes on him, you're jumping off anyway. So you can get this item here that's like on that wall. That's how you get to that. Now we're not gonna do this jump just yet. Uh, otherwise, you need to come up needlessly an, an extra time. Uh, there's a crystal lizard here that we're going to kill and then it's like less. Does uh, that running attack ever deflect? Okay, so I do a really fucking stupid thing and yep. run off here as opposed to just turn round. Yeah. So I don't know why the fuck I've done that. Um, but actually, I, there was a reason for that because you can light this bonfire now from jumping down. It turns out there was a method to that madness. You like you'd like that now, and then when you jump off, you can just coil fragment back to it, and you don't need to run all the way around again. There was a point in me doing it. I'm not an idiot. How about that? It probably would have taken less time for you just to double back and then go back and drop down. But then you have to run all the way back up again. Is what I'm saying. 
I'm saying you should have done both of these things before going oh. to the bonfire in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you want to light the bonfire, get the crystal lizard, then just run back from the crystal lizard, then do this jump. That's how you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I feel foolish. <laughs> <laughs> Point is, though, this is the second most... <laughs> Not as bad as Ryan when he was mindlessly swinging above the dog while locked onto the Kappa Demon in the Prepare to Die Again Let's Play. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we can continue on with the rest of this part. Uh, these two doors here are, um, I guess, shortcuts from sort of... It just makes navigating the next areas a little bit easier if you die. Not that you're going to ever remember the layout of this area. Now this guy, th these guys are some of the hardest fucking enemies. Um, arguably maybe worse than the Millwood Knights. It, oh god, right. They have speed and range and mobility. Uh, it is uh, a recipe for disaster. Yeah, they've got a lot of poise as well. Um, they attack like super fast. This the weapon you've got is good for fighting them. It's a real pain in the ass that their weapon is shit when you get it though. Oh yeah, yeah. Without I mean, it's a good rapier. It's just a terrible fucking like. It's certainly fun in PvP. Weapon. Yeah. It's a shame that it's just. So try and get the backstabs and then do like sort of charges when they're getting up. That's a good way of getting free damage. Can you stagger it with Warcry? You can stagger it with Warcry. Can you hit it with Warcry though? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's pretty jumpy. As soon as you kind of get something in like any of the hits with Warcry, it will like hit, keep hitting it. Oh no, I know it hits multiple times during the charge. So basically these guys have like tons of poise through all their attacks. I kept trying to like test to see what attacks I could knock them out of, but there really isn't many. As you can see, all these things just drop dung pies and stuff. Now I'm coming up to this gate here, and then to the right cliff wall, I'm kind of just dropping down and picking up this uh, dark gem. It just saves doing it later, essentially. May as well just get that enemy out the way, which is why I came up and done it the now. So there's like a little alcove in at the side. That's where this bit is. You want to actually kill all these guys, otherwise they're just going to be a, a total pain in the ass. They kind of all kind of clump up here because sometimes you need to like drop back down here again and run round. So if you kill them, it, it just makes, like, dealing with them easier. Because, like I said, they all clump up and just start, like, screaming at you and try to push you off the edge and shit, so... One of them just fucking suicide. Oh, yeah, see what I mean? They keep doing this kind of shit, and if you have to come back round here, there's tons of them. So just deal with them here and now. Um, there's a little item round here at the left. What I picked up. More of these things that are just fucking spewing shit at you. Um, I'm just sick of their shit at this point, so I'm probably playing quite sloppily. In this room here, there's nothing. There is nothing in that room. Not, not even an item. Nothing. So there's kind of like a little sort of, not technique, but like an efficient way of going about this next part. So you run up here and then you jump off the roof here onto that like little ledge down there. And then when you double back, uh, there's a shortcut, but the things on the roof are going to shoot you with magic. You could pick up the item on the ledge now, but you just got to get shot off their magic. So if you run up to the roof just now and kill them, when you drop off to get the item that's on the ledge, you won't be getting shot at, which is basically... And this is the other side of the broken battlement where you got the Titanite Lizard. Uh, yeah, essentially. Where Tony fell down. Uh, it's quite weird because these things spawn um, the home and soul masses so quickly and they fire off so quickly I found it really hard to dodge. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but... If you just tanked it, Millwood she was pretty good. Uh, yeah, so I should probably mention this before, but we're using the Millwood shield because it's got really good stability. It's a 100 block shield and it gives you a little bit of HP regen. It's super negligible, but it's still there. Is its magic defense any good? I think it is. Millwood stuff's generally okay for magic, is it not? Um, I mean, whatever its defenses Can't are, remember. it's decent. So as you saw, there was the bonfire and then this is one of the shortcuts that we've opened. So you can kind of see how it saves you running around, um, like past that bit where I killed all the Corvines to the right there. It saves you running back around that area. Um, so I guess in a sense you didn't need to kill all of them, but if you drop, if you fall down at any given point, then yeah, you kind of do. So we're just ignoring all the things that are shooting you on the roof. It's too much of a pain in the ass to kill. Uh, we're just running into this bit here, and you don't need to do this because it's just a rusted coin. But you can drop down here to get a rusted coin, or you can just keep, you know, following the. And then path. you can climb the ladder again. Actually, I don't know if that was a rusted coin, but whatever the fuck it was. Um, yeah, so you actually do want to drop down here though. Um, this is another one in the shortcut. But it's not a shortcut actually, this one isn't a shortcut. This just leads out the door. But this is where you get the Slave Knight set. Now this set is fucking amazing. It's one of those armor sets where it has... It's Gales. 
yeah, it's Gale's armor set, but it's one of those armor sets where, for its weight, it has the absolute highest defense. So, like, that's it's just one of those particularly good items. How meta of you? Well, well it's just, it's it's just a good. meta slave. <laughs> So it's, it's honestly, it's, it's actually the armor set that I use as a base point for like if something's better or worse, it's that good. For, uh, for me personally, I mean, it's obviously kind of out of taste, but I, I really, really, really like the Slave Knight set a lot. Nah, I like my armor set too much. So anyway, running this way and uh, there's a Crystal Lizard up here. It's quite hard to get. Um, thankfully I get it, but I have had it where it's ran off the side before. Another one of these cor Corvins show up. Uh, this time wielding dual claws, because he's extra edgy. Yeah. Uh, so you've already picked up these claws, that was the things that were on the roof. The, the claws are actually... I don't know if everyone that I was fighting was just an idiot, but in PvP, I found the claws to be really, really good. I really enjoyed them. They are. Uh, hilariously, you get some amount of hyper armor on its weapon art, so people think they can just kind of stagger you out of it. They can't. And now you just seen that war cry, the battle charge thing, the sword art, where he just staggered it like five times and then R1 would it a bunch. Yeah. So, uh, down there is like, we're basically on top of the build. So, the, I, ju I just cut out, the, I dropped down there for whatever fucking reason, so I just cut it back to where we were. So, we're, we run up that side hill there and we jump onto this roof of this little chapel. And, um, yeah, so there's a. a there's a bit that you can drop down to here, as you see. Just be very, very careful. Drop off slowly. You don't want to over. You don't want to overshoot it and then just fall down and have these two corvines to deal with because they will fuck you up. The item is very much bait. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's basically just a um, a soul packet there, and there's a patrolling corvine down here. The only real strategy that I could find for dealing with these guys is to essentially just run out of here as quickly as fucking possible. You could plunging attack and then just two-handed R1 spam that guy. Uh, I mean, you can, but basically what I'm saying is, you. Uh, you can open this door here once you've aggroed that guy. The, the aggro leash for the other one isn't long enough, so as long as you've walked along the rafters to the door, you can come up here, and this bit is probably the most effective like point for fighting them, essentially, because you've got the cover of the pillars. It, it does help quite significantly, I find. Just fight them like you did German. Now, also, don't... Not German. Uh, fucking the... One. No, fucking, what's his name? In the graveyard. God damn it. Gascoigne. Ah, yeah, kind of. So, also, um, just there that you see to the left of the door, there is one of those uh, tree women, uh, birches, as we're calling them. Uh, if you activate it, she'll just start, like, spewing that frozen mist. Uh, that's got to be a pain in the ass to deal with, along with one of them. So, just saying, you try and avoid the left of the door. But, ultimately, um, I'm just trying to bait this one guy out. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't it, it doesn't take the bait immediately, and it fucking run back. He just doesn't like you. No, he doesn't. I mean, he did throw knives at him. Could just went on like, hey man, you wanna go for a walk? So I can't remember if I open up the, the the gate there, but you saw the gate to the left. That's essentially opens up the shortcut, and you don't need to go up all the buildings and run over. If you die, you can just run from the bonfire up the hill past the gate. I can't remember if I opened it up or not. That, that first throw was like a really, it, was, it reminded me of like the old school COD panic knives where just like, ah fuck, and just <laughs> launched it in any direction. Like the AI didn't even have a target, it just threw it. So now I've baited this guy up here. That's uh... Landed the wee cheeky beaky backstab. Yeah. And then I can get the uh... So it's, you need to be like super quick when doing that power attack, otherwise it's fucking... Have you tried parrying it? Uh, fuck, try to parry one of these and missing. Can, you, can you parry with the Melwood Shield? Uh, no, uh, the Melwood Shield is a skill shield, so it means ah. you, if you're one hand in the thing, you just automatically do the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I almost ran off the edge there, don't let that happen. So there we go, I'm opening up these gates and it just means you can run straight up the hill and just into the gate immediately. Yeah, so this is behind the first rapier corvian that you fought. Yeah, yeah. So coming in here, now all that for literally the worst fucking miracle in the game. The way a white corona, they're shit. It's shit. Doesn't do anything. It could have been amazing. Could have been amazing, but it's not. So, what does it do, Tony? Nothing. Doesn't do anything. What is it meant to do? Fires out a little disc, and then it comes back to you. Oh yeah, it was Krillin's Destructo disc. Aye. So you kill this tree here, and it's... um. It's dropped a young white branch, which has absolutely zero utility at this particular point. Um, I'm also, the, the tree bitches, they, they drop um, alluring skills. Mentioned that in the last part, but I might as well just go over it again. Uh, and the Corvines uh, don't 
You don't drop anything. They can drop large titanite shards, and at this point, who gives a shit about large titanite shards? Look at the state of them. They don't have anything to drop. Okay, so you can kill this guy so fucking quickly <laughs> uh, with this particular weapon because of, like, its weapon art. Just roll catch him. Uh, you can also do the thing as well, where you can like cheese him like any other uh, NPC. If you type the R1, the, like the, the normal R1s enough, you can just like hit, run forward, hit, run forward, and you can do that one NPCs later on. Anyway, that's a contraption key. I'm gonna uh, splice in some footage of fighting that guy properly now, but generally you can see how easy this weapon makes fighting a lot of the NPCs. Did you ever find out if his sword's any good? Uh, the, oh the no, wait, is, yeah, his yeah. sword is pretty good. It's, it's, in, the, it's the, the longest, black magic one, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the longest great yeah. sword. Yeah, his one is pretty damn good. Yeah, it's, it's fucking decent. So, you don't, you don't need to actually talk to her, but she's just an important NPC later on in terms of lore anyway. You run out this door, you drop, drop down here, and then you get to the bonfire. And there's your shortcut door back to the room you were just in. <laughs> so that you no longer have to go around that way. Pretty much. Amazing. Ingenious level design. So at this point, we're going to go back to uh, Firelink Shrine to dump more of our points into strength. At this point, if you have enough strength, I think you can consistently kill the Farron followers in two hits. Which is kind of what you want because the next part is fucking reeking a Farron followers. There's so many of them. When you get the mill with Great Axe, you can kill them in two hits. Um, well, so you shouldn't all mill with Axe. No, I know, but if you dump into strength, you could also upgrade to the Great Axe if you wanted. Interestingly, um... In relation to this weapon, uh, when it comes to like fighting Medea, for example, the whole... So sell all your soul packs at this point, or like pop them or whatever, because we're just leveling into strength. But in terms of weapons, the amount of damage you actually do with this battle axe against Medea is so close to like great axe damage, it's maybe like 100 points off. But considering that you attack so much faster, like the amount of DPS you get out of this weapon is like so much higher than Medea. And a lot of the time you can actually hit Medir more than once when the whole strategy was basically just like hit Medir once, run away, hit Medir once, run away. But this weapon actually does a better job of that, which is really interesting. Uh, how easy is it to stagger Medir? You can't stagger Medir. Ah, right. Then yeah, don't use the Great Axe. There's no point. I'd say, I'd say only use weapons like the Great Axe against bosses that you can stagger because then it means you can build up greater stagger and fewer opportunities than what you can with like a Battle Axe because a Great Axe is going to inflict way more stagger damage than a Battle Axe will. I mean, yeah, Just because it's an ultra weapon. So like those are good weapons if you're up against like, NPCs, I guess. Great Axes can be good because you can easily break their poise quickly, whereas with a Battle Axe it might take two hits. So this next part um, can be a little confusing and daunting. Uh, but it I is. But You'll I get there. Yeah. I think I've managed to... To hit. Uh, I've managed to, like, come up with a sort of way of approaching this next area that makes it a lot easier to deal with, I think. I know what they can do. What? Leave a trail of prism stones. Hansel and Gretel tactics. So, they, <laughs> funnily enough, it does give you prism stones. So Well, there you go then. <laughs> so you can use them to kind of, I guess, orient yourself around this area. Now, you really, really want to kill... Um, you the the Farron Knights like one at a time as much as possible. You don't want to get ganged up because as soon as you do, they just, they just pile up on you. It's you, fucking horrible. You more than two shot them at this point. Like you're hitting them for fucking over two thirds of their health in one R one. A two handed one anyway because of the extra strength scale and sure. But yeah, you're hitting them for like three quarters of their health in one R one. At least from what I can see from the preview. So this is what I would consider the the first area essentially and the only items in this first area are the prism stones um to get the next items in like one smooth run you want to run up this hill to the side here that kind of curves up i mean you'll see me do it but um then there's like a little drop off part and you get the follower shield i can't remember if the follower shield is actually particularly good or not it's probably got quite i mean it's probably okay but um compared to the erythrio oak shield nothing really compares in like how good it is just because of the, you know, the um, the health regen that's like inherent in it. So beating these guys out one at a time because I don't want to get ganged up on. Simple as that. I wonder if you could stack this shield to just mitigate, completely mitigate poison. Uh, you you can with a bunch of um, like healing items, like regen items. Yeah, I was thinking like spells and shit like that as well. Try and bait that guy forward because then he just becomes like an extra issue to deal with like around the way. 
So as you can see, you can drop off there, get the follower shield, and you hug this wall round to the right to get an ember. And then that is once you're like past this wall, this is what I would consider the the second area that you're in. And you can tell that because now you're in the vicinity of the bell, basically. And also make sure you're two-handed as you come round that corner because if you're one-handed, you'll deflect off of the wall on your right, and you'll probably get knocked off. So just make sure you two hands so your weapon doesn't deflect when you swing through. So there's some guys with javelins here on the left up there, so that's going to be a bit of a pain. And there's a few guys at once here. Um, just try not to let what that happened there. Yeah, no, that was definitely a mistake. <laughs> so in a, in, a, in a sense, you could you could argue that the sloppy footage is good because Seems it shows you what not to do. You've yourself in uh, quite a pickle here. This is it actually completely demonstrates the reason why you want to kind of kill these guys one at a time and as slow as you can because you can kind of get ganged up on here and if you're not particularly well versed at the game then it is going to become a problem if you had a little more poise or a little more hyper armor you might have been able to like yeah make that much easier because you could tank those, those hits so we're going to pick up that ember there and then follow this path kind of follow this like wall like you take the right around and then you can follow the right like basically horizontally if you kind of see what i'm talking about um guy up at the bell there as you can see so as like i'm saying this is in the second area that kind of revolves around the bell and you can tell where we are because you'll get this titanite chunk here and you'll be able to see the tower over there across the way so now i'd say we're still in the second area um but now we're going to kind of go over to that area to get there you just want to hug this part to the right again um so from the titanite chunk all oh, right, yeah, this is me just demonstrating, like, if you come down here, that's like, there you go, that you're, that's in the first area, and you've took that hill all the way up to the second area. Just, just to kind of try to show you, like, it is quite confusing, but this is the sort of layout of the whole space, realistically. So that's just what I'm doing now. So again, if you're shit at the game, this will probably be useful, but if you're just looking for the items, then I'm sorry for the hold up. Anyway, so you want to... Go at this Titanite chunk here, you can see the whole tower area, and then you follow this wall round to the right, and then that opens up the shortcut, I guess you could call it. And um, there's like a whole bunch of items in this kind of area-ish, as you'll soon see. So you can kick this down here. I think I, I get caught in animation here. I try to be like fast and then yeah, it just <laughs> knocks me back. I would have been so angry if that's what like stopped this run. Now the, eight, the bit down there, like if you fall off the roof, there's nothing there. Like there's just nothing. I don't know why I, I jumped onto this, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm pretty sure we dropped off in the uh, let's play to see if there was something there and there wasn't. No, there's not. Did we not do that? I mean, I did it at home. But over here, over this bridge, um, and over this uh, this wooden bar, this fallen tree essentially, there's a titanite chunk, and then that's like the only item here. So again, if you can buy them, it doesn't you don't need to come here. It's not going to really be of much of a benefit. But again, it's free upgrade money. materials. Yeah, exactly. It's free upgrade materials. There you go, there's your chunk, and then you can just run over, etc, and then carry on. So the next area, there's like a... Yeah, so down there, like, down there leads back to the bonfire without having to go past any enemies, I suppose. But ultimately, it's... There's no items, doesn't matter. So we're running back over here, and... At this point, there's like kind of three entrance and exit ways, right? So there's that bit over there to the right that curves around. There's that bit there to the front, um, which is essentially like the path that leads from the exit. A tree falls down and then you can run back here. This path here to the right is what is the exit from the basin that we're going to fall into. And this little snowdrift here is what takes us down into this basin. Now, like I said, in some parts of this guide, we're going to tell you what not to do. Don't bother fighting any of these Melwood Knights. It's irrelevant, they don't drop anything good, you can't farm anything off them. Just pick up these soul packets and essentially go and run into the little cave at the back here. Try and just run and avoid all these Melwood Knights as much as you can. Don't they drop the Great Axe here? Nope. You get the Earth Shaker or Earthquake or whatever the fuck yeah. it is. Um, you just run past this thing. That's the one I'm talking about. Oh, it's, it's just a pickup. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can definitely just run past this thing without having that happen, by the way. But uh, essentially, you can just pick it up. Now, you could just homer bone back here if you wanted to, but I want to show you the exit that you get out of this bit. Of. So, you just run up the basin there, and there you can see the kind of cave at the back. That cave runs under that middle path that leads from the exit, like the bit that I said. Um, so, you're kind of running under that pathway, and then this bit will kind of... You can kind of just uh, drop off here. 
Oh, it's not even a drop off. It just runs round. Oh, there's a drop off. And right there, up there, is that middle path, and that's the bit that you just ran under. Fucking hell, my nose is so itchy. Fuck. <laughs> so yeah. Um, the ultimate Dark Souls experience. Aye. And there you go. That's that bit to the right there. That was a drop off. That leads to basin. the basin. Now this bit here is us in the third part, and this is essentially us pretty much coming to the exit. Uh, there's a few items here that you want to get. But again, you know, these followers just drop. Follower armor set, titanite shards, large shards. So, there's a, there's a really weird bit here that I couldn't figure out. It's not an issue, so because I couldn't figure it's not a, a pain, because it's not hard, but there's a wolf here, but there's some other wolves that you hear like a wolf cry. Now, in the other part, you were able, you were able to kill the wolves before it would summon more. I cannot find the wolf that's, that initially howls to summon the rest of them. It doesn't really matter because it's not difficult, but yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. So that's where we came from to the right, we follow this path up and round. Um, this is where the wolves kind of show up. Now, just like take your time, but again, like they die super easy. I thought one of these wolves were the ones that started howling, but wh whatever the other one is that does howl is just so far away that you can't get to it. <laughs> just please kill me! It seems that AI is doing that more and more frequently where it just stands still. Do you remember when Havel did it during our stream? Um, he just stood still and then as soon as you looked at chat he just slammed you into the ground. <laughs> and we started laughing because we were taking the piss and Havel was waiting for you to read chat. So yeah, so now you can take that path up. You want to jump into left here and then you've got a Millwood Knight that you kind of have to fight essentially. He has the bow doesn't he? Um, no, he drops the... he's got the no, quake stone hammer behind him. He has the bow. Oh, well, yeah, but... Because yeah, he's firing but, those fucking AoE explosion Millwood arrow things. I suppose you could kind of bait him forward and grab it and then run, but um, I didn't want to take the risk of him chasing me, essentially. I so, don't like fighting these guys either. They're really fucking annoying. They remind me of the uh, the big massive hammer knights in Dark Souls 2 in the Dragon Shrine area. Yeah, that is what they remind me of. Except like before they patched them, uh -huh. where they just infinity comboed you to death. Like that, that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, so I fucking hate Hitbox in this guy. every direction, basically. Every animation has a hitbox in every fucking direction. Ah, uh, essentially, it's just one of those fucking things. It's so, like so my the... ultimate offensive defense. And that's uh, defending the quake stone hammer. Now, again, another thing to just avoid these fucking Millwood Knights, just run past them. This bit reminds me of the run up to Neato so much for some reason, but um... It's because it's the Great Bow and the massive enemy swinging at you. If only one of them snuck out and tried to punt you off the side. So, here is the final shortcut. As you can see, you can run... <laughs> you, you dodged yeah. the tree this time. Yeah, <laughs> and arrow. So you can run here, you can run down here, so again, you... There's the basin, you can you can totally see how where the orientation to this bit is, and then you can just run through that little alcove there and that takes you back to the other tree that I did get hit with, that takes you back to the bonfire. So the next part is now we're like in the final, final area of this DLC. Initially, you, you just want to run through this area. There is some items to pick up here, but we are going to run and get the bonfire, that or open the shortcut to the bonfire we've already got. That way, we don't need to run through the bit that we've just done. If the worst should happen. Yeah. It's basically. But the next bit is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, I do speed up a little part in the next bit because of all those um flies. Yeah, all the like fly humanoid guys. Um, they, just flies. They, they, there's so there must be it, there must be like at least twenty of them like down in the basement of the bit that we're about to go to, and it's all to pick up some okay items, I guess. Look, they had some leftover stuff from Blood Bomb that they had to use. They'd already paid for it, alright? <laughs> Jesus, man, give them a fucking break. It's not as if they're like an internationally recognised game design studio or anything. <laughs> Fuck! Okay, so, the cool part about this bit is if you have as much strength as we have at this point, if you use the self buff, you can one-shot all of these guys, which is cool. Next, um, that item there is a dung pie. If you pick it up, a guy shoves you off the edge and you fall down into the bottom. So it's worthless. Yeah, so don't pick it up. Um, so yeah, I'm two shot these guys currently. Can't you kill the guy then pick up? Um, yeah, I think so, but I'm not sure if it just takes you into like a like a patches sort of cutscene nah. thing. So I couldn't be all taking the risk. So I just you, you can, it's a dumb pie. It doesn't fucking matter. Now you also want to equip a torch, 
because you'll get covered in these little bleed leeches and that is it's gonna be a pain in the ass if you don't if you equip the torch it takes them off and that's the only item that does it and nothing ever explains that that's a thing wait wasn't that also a thing in bloodborne uh it rings a bell but i'm not sure i don't, I don't want to commit to that answer so as you can see, that's why I was questioning. <laughs> you can one shot all these enemies. That is, I've just sped this bit up of me just one shotting all the enemies in this area. That way I can show you where the actual fucking items are. All it is is um, Vinheim's armor set. Do you know what I miss when I see shit like this? What? The days of Wrath of the God where you just corralled all the enemies into one corner and took them out in one fell swoop. <laughs> Like going into the catacombs of Wrath of God is so nice. Just pull everything into the middle and just boom, it's all dead. So there you go. I picked up Vinheim's armor and the blood gem. And as soon as you open up this area, there'll be a... Crystal Lizard. Yeah. Now, you might need to quit and reload for this point because it appears that the Crystal Lizard can run away from you even if you're behind the wall. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you quit and reload, that Crystal Lizard will be there just in case you did scare it off from where it couldn't see you. Hey, you guys like nostalgia? You're about to get a whole big fucking spoonful of it. Yeah. <laughs> so here you go, fall down the Great Hollow again. I'm not talking about this bit. You get nostalgia from this bit because we've already done this before. But, um... Oh, so there wasn't even a Great Hollow you're referencing, just the fact you've already done it. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm referencing uh, the invader here as well. Really? It's Isn't fucking it Phantom King Jeremiah in Priscilla's boss room. How have you not oh, noticed that? Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, good point. So, this bit is actually it's one of those super things where you, they've clearly made it to just be a total cock. Why don't you drop down to the branch lower? That's how you do it. You, you, I don't want to risk taking the bigger drop, essentially. Cat ring. I mean, sure, but you might slip off the edge. You know what it's fucking like. Nah, it ain't 60 FPS Dark Souls 1 on PC, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, I slipped off the edge several times earlier today when I was playing New Londo. Really? Well, oh. once, but it was a real cunt. So there's a the part in flame, and there's some homer bones for you. Now this guy, you can cheese super hard. Um, yeah, because he's Phantom King Jeremiah and you fought him in Dark Souls 1. No, 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 right, just watch how I kill this guy. Now, um, I get, so it's just an NPC fight. It's like, it's hard to give strategies for fighting these guys because they, they all essentially kind of feel the same almost. But, you can do this. Um, I don't I don't work it out until just a little bit towards the end, but um, yeah, it gets I mean, fun. this works. this works pretty well. So you just treat him like he's one of the shadows of Yarn. Yeah. I know, I'll give this guy more credit. He's better than King Jeremiah because he at least brought an actual weapon to the fight this time. <laughs> Jeremiah brought a fucking whip. Idiot. So there you go, you get the floating chaos and now you can just head back to the Shrine Bonfire and we are going to dump all our points into strength yet again. I'm sensing a bit of repetition and how we're levelling up now. It's almost like we're dumping stats. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that... We want to use all our soul packets essentially, like initially when I was trying to do the guide I was like do we need any of these soul packets for any No you don't. If, no. You're, if you're at least this far ahead in the game, just dump all these into leveling up in case you... Uh, because you can like farm souls like super easily later on. See at this point the levels don't even matter because all you're doing at this point is giving yourself a little bit more damage. Your build isn't getting any greater survivability or anything like that because we're finished leveling health and endurance. So you're just dumping points in for damage. So if you end up a lower level than us, it's not that bad. If you end up a higher level than us, you end up better off. Yeah. It just no, depends how much farming you're willing to do or how lucky you get when it comes to deaths and shit like that. But at this point, levels in the build don't really matter. It's just a little bit more damage on top of the build that we already have. So now we're going to be fighting the boss, Fred. Now, if you are fairly new to the game, it's all it's it almost might seem like this boss could Play potentially. Blood bomb <laughs> yeah, uh, actually it's not even a terrible bit of advice, but... Get used to the speed of that game, and then play this one. <laughs> okay, so I learned this boss not using the summon. If you summon in Gale, which you can just to the left there... It's a bad idea, because it no, no, no. the health. No, 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 Gale is so helpful for this boss fight, so helpful. Um, and when I learned it, I was not embered, and I didn't use Gale. So if you're in that position, then it's going to be really difficult. Gale will definitely mitigate up some of the difficulty in the next part, but basically there's a sort of uh, trick to fighting this. Um, you don't, it's one of the bosses you don't want to get greedy with because they attack so quickly. Um, you wait until you get the opening, you attack a couple of times and you back the fuck off. Her um, physical attacks are fairly easy to dodge, but your main way of getting in damage is this. As soon as she jump, as soon as she goes invisible, she'll jump up. Look where the smoke puff is. 
If it goes up, she's behind you. If it goes to the side, then she's at the side, etc. And then you can run and hit her because she's charging up an attack. And that's essentially where your main damage is going to be coming from fighting this. If you can get confident, you can definitely hit her with your weapon. But as you can see, she jumped up, you turn the camera around, you'll see where she lands, uh, and then you can get a couple of hits in. And the attack she's charging up does do some pretty significant oh, yes, damage. Yes. It's kind of her like big hitting attack, and definitely in stage one anyway. Uh, that is very, very fucking hard to dodge as well. You really, really want to make sure that you hit her out of that fucking animation. And if you haven't fought her before... Oh. So you can see where the puff went. If the puff went to the left, she's went to the right, essentially. Like, like that. Um, what I was gonna say there was, uh, if you've never fought this boss before, there's three, is it three stages? Yeah. So, ending this stage with like 10 Estus, you might be like, yes. Try aiming a little bit closer to like maybe uh -huh. 14 Estus minimum for the end of this stage. Like, run a bit there. Definitely above 10 anyway. D definitely. For stage one, because stage two is a little bit tougher, and stage three is just stage one, but on steroids. This boss is pretty much a battle of attrition. Uh, you kind of just want to, like, again, not be greedy because you want to keep as much... She's fast, so you want to be able to dodge out of her attacks as much as you can. So, this stage can... It's actually... You think it's easier than it is, personally, anyway. Um, fighting this guy, you kind of want to aim for him. He's the bigger target, and uh, she only really does a couple of moves. She'll do this, um, she'll make the ground cold, and then it will kind of explode. Now the issue with that is it kind of works, it's kind of cool, like it does work in terms of like a cool thing where you want to avoid this guy, you want to make sure she's used this attack, get the fuck out of the way, and then Don't you get, get your Don't get because then you take more damage. So you can, she'll basically keep her distance, you need to stay behind this guy as much as you can, but the weird thing is there's a lot of variance with this particular uh, guy. Sometimes I can stay, stick behind him super easy, other times he's always on me and he's always attacking. He only has like three different attacks. Um, now you definitely want to hit her when she starts to do that. Um, that's when you get the damage in at her. But he has like this attack where he's kind of crawling towards you. There's an attack where he spits out fire towards you, which I think he's just about to do. Um, yeah, there's this attack. Um, that's, that's easy enough to kind of avoid the bad combinations if he's doing this and she starts to heal him. But that generally won't happen. Um, it's easy enough to kind of dodge his attacks, but again, sometimes it isn't. It's really odd. Like I said, there's variance. So apparently you can also do damage by hitting the chair. Um, so there's that. <laughs> he also has this big slam attack as well that will do so much fucking damage if you get caught in it. So really, really that's avoid it. that. No, no, that's not. But yeah, the slam one, does it, not, does it hit you a couple of times with the slam? Um, yeah, like, you can, like, just, just kind of, yeah. like, it's, like, so he has the sort of crawl one, but the slams is kind of, like, his main sort of, yeah, there you go, there you, you go. saw it there. That will do some amount of damage if you get caught in that full thing. You were frostbit, but it did still take off two-thirds of your health, so. So, again, a, a way to dodge him is if he's crawling towards you, you don't kind of want to dodge it, you kind of want to, you do this sort of, like, running dodge, you kind of want to, like, run around him, is instead of kind of, like, dodge the attack. Now, when you do this... This is where the fun begins. Yeah. So you want to have at least 10 Estus, if not more. You want to make sure you've got your fucking uh, Tears of Denial on. Now, I actually have a much better run, but the fact that this one's quite sloppy is good. When she does this attack here, you want to dodge back and to... Uh, back and to, like, an angle, because she, the, the Black Snake kind of goes at you. Um, really, what you want her to do is do these... Um, small shitty physical attacks at you they're quick but when she finishes her attack chain that attack there um specifically um that's a good point of hitting her when she goes invisible in this stage you have to track her down you have to because she does this fucking really difficult attack to dodge um so she was charging up there but you want to stay in her ass as soon as she goes invisible you want to stay in her ass because the attack she unleashes does so much damage <clears throat> When she jumps up in the air, you want to be fucking rolling backwards as well. You don't want to get caught in any of those attacks. But as you can see, you want to, you want to kind of maintain a semi-close distance so it'll bait her into using her physical attacks. Uh, that's And you want to just get good at dodging them. You'll probably take a bunch of chip damage through your shield, but if you can just hit back, take a few hits if you have to, uh, through the shield anyway, then at the end of her attack chains, you can get in a few hits that you should see here. There you go. Yeah, so on the last attack, roll forward to get behind her. 
because if you roll backwards you're creating distance and then you're shortening your window so make sure you roll forwards sadly i am a little bit sloppy uh, right so that attack there um right so this one here is easy enough to do um this one here you just dodge backwards now this attack here that you just done that spinny one if you're good you can roll into that attack and you can hit her after she's done it because there's a little bit of a wind down to that one. But if you get hit by it, it will take away two thirds of your health, if not more. So as you can see there, I rolled into it and I was able to hit her. Now again, she's went invisible. You want to stay in her ass. You want to make sure you knock her out of this pish because she will do some big fuck off devastating black snake attack and it's actually quite hard to dodge. Um, and it does so much damage if it hits you. So that's why you want to stay on her. Apparently the fire doesn't hurt you either. Uh, no, it doesn't. So you can kind of... That's okay. It's not so big a deal. The black snakes is easy enough to avoid. Like, So there you go. I'm dodging back into an angle. That way I can get out of the range of the initial blast. And I'm also like dodging the black snake. Wow, she really likes her fucking jump attacks. If she does the one where she kind of jumps at you, as you saw there, you can kind of dodge around her. But it's, it's not worth it realistically. She seems to use jump attacks when you create bigger distance. Yeah, so it, it's kind of odd. You kind of want to stay at a sort of middle distance to her. You, you almost want to be semi-aggressive or at the very least like counter-attacking these particular attacks. How does rolling forward into this combo work? Uh, not good, not good. Not good. You always want to be, she attacks so many times you just want to be moving backwards, dodging when you can. You don't want to keep dodging because if you dodge out of it too far you won't be able to hit her. And you might not have enough um, stamina to like follow up. Did you try the ravioli step? Uh, no, I, I didn't. It just happened. Damn. So there you go. Like after, like the one where she kind of jumps up on her last attack chain. That's definitely a big one that you can hit her. Um, so I like almost lost track of her there. Again, you don't want that to happen. Now I'm getting pretty close to fighting her. I kind of I made a good comeback here. Um, I kind of got good. But yeah, she had like there you go. Maybe like a tiny chip of her health missing, like maybe one block of her health missing. You had five Estus and you finished it out on two. So I'll tell you what as well. Uh, so that bonfire there will take you to the DLC. If the next DLC, if you're not at the um, Solar Cinder just yet. Um, I wonder how much health you gain throughout that fight from just the shield alone. Yeah, I know. Now there's also another thing as well is using the weapon art on her last stage against her isn't recommended because she can recover so quickly that the, by the time you've finished the attack animation you go to attack her she can actually just follow up with an attack you only really want to be attacking her in her designated open portions i'm just going to hazard i guess is the next stage going to when we go back to so we're going to talk to the npc yeah of course is the next stage then go back to fire link and dump into strength how did you know i just had just a guess <laughs> But there you go, uh, you get the I think he gave you a Titanite Slab there. Something like that. Uh, but he does give you a Titanite Slab, but I don't know if Because he's the only one. poor person that has anything. Yeah. Here, our village is the like, <laughs> symbol of a god. It's like their holy relic. So there we go, that is DLC 1 done. And if you are somehow managed to follow along with us, it should take you about an hour and a half if you can blast through it. And yeah, there's only two bosses. Uh, but obviously Freyd is such an amazing boss. It's basically five bosses. No, um, <laughs> she's at most three. So there's four bosses in this DLC. If you count no, the last one is two. Three. <laughs> and one has three stages. That's a cop out. Especially when stage three is just <coughs> Maria stage one. <laughs> so I'm just uh, selling all my soul packets just so I can dump as much into strength. If you, if, when you're going into the third DLC, you, you really want to be as prepared as you can be because the third DLC is tough. Really is tough. Yeah, just keep dumping strength until you hit like 40 or 50. Uh, well, 40 is where I kind of do the cut off, but that's kind of... That's like your soft cap. So there we go. That is the final stats for this DLC. The next parts will be doing, obviously, the next two DLCs. And um, yeah, uh, hope, hope you enjoyed this and hope it was pretty informative. That should be pretty much fucking everything in these DLCs. I really hope we didn't miss... I really hope we didn't miss anything, but I don't I think we did. I know what you missed. The what? dung pie and the fly room. <laughs> I, I mentioned it. It doesn't matter. It you does it. matter. No, it doesn't. If we didn't get away with that in the, in the Dark Souls 1 game, we don't get away with it now. Ah, we missed a soul packet in the Dark Souls 1 game. We still missed it. That means we need to redo the Dark Souls 1 game, doesn't it? I guess we'll just need to do it when Remastered comes out. I guess. So I guess you can look forward to that as well. I actually kind of really It's not it. fucking happening. Yeah, I think we should do it. Why? It's the same game. More views.
But it's the same game. I know what we do. I know right. What we do. Right. But we don't tell them this. We just upload the original game. <laughs> game but we re-render it in 1080. That way they think it's the remastered and then just, we just make money for the same thing. Nobody would know. No, we just keep the outros in and just say we're bringing it back. <laughs> yeah, don't tell them this. Anyway. We just, we just need to get them to keep giving us Patreon money and then we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this part and... Um, the next parts for the next DLCs should be as soon as I can get a good run on them. So, uh, yeah, see you then.